Welcome back. Now, so far, more than 60 journalists and media workers in 24 countries have died of coronavirus across the world. And the death of veteran ENCA cameraman Lungele Tom has brought into sharp focus the important work journalists are doing on the front line in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Lungele became the first known South African journalist to succumb to COVID-19 on Wednesday morning. We are now joined by Lindsay Dentlinker, a colleague of the late Lungile, who also wrote a very touching article on the life and times of the late Lungile. Lindsay, good morning and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. I can tell you Lungile would be absolutely thrilled that uh, you want to know about his life. I yesterday just went and spied a bit on your Twitter account and from your tweets I could see that you and, uh, and Lungile had quite a special relationship. Talk to us about how and when you met and, and, and what your relationship was like. Well, I first met Lungile in 2013 when he came to work for ENCA. I was working on the desk at the time, so um, we didn't really... Um, we went out in the field together, so our interactions were really um, based in the newsroom, um, him bringing visuals back from the field. He was uh, very proud about his work, and so he would always come to the desk and check with me whether I was happy with what he had brought uh, for, the, for the evening bulletin. Um, but in the last uh, 18 months or so, uh, we've been working a lot in the field together, with me a lot uh, at Parliament, where I spent uh, most of my time. Um, but we discussed the city, doing all kinds of things. Um, and we shared a fairly special bond. We're uh, only a year apart in age. We uh, share a birthday uh, in a close proximity in March. And uh, so, and also being the more senior members uh, of our newsroom, we often had uh, a lot to a lot to chat about. What happened with Lungele is a very clear indication of not only how important the work is that we do uh, as journalists, but also, um, you know, in a time such as COVID-19, uh, we're not called essential workers for nothing because we are really in the front line um, of this issue, uh, talking to individuals and, and going into communities to get the story, to get the facts and so forth. Um, what do you say, what would you say, I mean, when we talk about the importance of journalists in the fight of a COVID-19 pandemic, what are your sentiments as, around that? Well, I think as uh, journalists, we often uh, see ourselves as frontline workers uh, anyway. And uh, when this pandemic struck uh, and the lockdown um, came upon us very quickly, I don't think we really had a lot of time to process what this would mean for us in terms of the work we do. And I don't think too many of us were thinking too much about it. It was just we were going to do our job anyway. We were going to go out and uh, cover this just as we would uh, any other story. And we had nothing really else to base this on. It's unlike anything else we've ever encountered. But I don't think we really process that too much. I think uh, as journalists, uh, naturally, we're very gung-ho. We like of an adventure. Yeah. We like a new situation. I mean, we had seen from our international broadcasters what uh, the pandemic was doing over there and what it might present. But the situation was nearly as serious, uh, obviously, at about six weeks ago when we were first, uh, you know, um, aware that the way we work might have to change. Um, but we were just going to do what we had to do anyway, telling people stories and uh, telling people stories in terms of what this um, pandemic might mean for them. And so I don't really think we gave it uh, too much of uh, a second thought. Lungile in particular was a very gung-ho person. He loved the adventure, no matter what we were doing, whether it was a long, sometimes boring day for camera people at Parliament or we were going into the Cape Flats uh, to deal with gang violence. Uh, we were just ready to go. And uh, so I think in the, in the beginning, and it's not really until this week, everything happened so quickly uh, with Lungile leaving us just a week ago, uh, was uh, right out there in, in the front line. And um, so I think we've had to process very quickly in the last few days as to what this really means uh, for us in terms of doing our work. How has the work environment at the ENCA changed um, in order to adhere to government's regulations when it comes to the fight against COVID-19? Um, well, we didn't have a lot of time before the lockdown started uh, for us to make 
aspirations in terms of how we're going to change the way we work. Um, but obviously, we had to reduce the amount of contact we have uh, with each other. And um, with that in mind, we were uh, split into teams. And so for the last few weeks, I unfortunately didn't get to work much with Ngile because he was an opposite team to me. So we were split the number of reporters and the number of cameramen and also the number of video editors, etc., in the newsroom itself so that we would minimize uh, contact, minimize uh, how much uh, interaction we could have with each other in the newsroom, uh, and just to keep numbers down. Uh, so in our physical space in the newsroom itself, uh, we had to uh, separate, as you know, newsrooms are often uh, quite fine spaces. We don't have the luxury of having our own offices or uh, lots of space to work uh, from. So we now sit within a meter and a half apart. So where I normally have a computer right next to me, that has now been moved this big open space. And my, my colleague then sits um, a, a whole desk away from me. She works on an opposite shift to me. So I don't see her every day. She comes on the days that I don't work. And uh, we've also tried to reduce the number of hours we work generally. So we'd work maybe three days on and two days off because also bearing in mind we've got to keep a 24-hour news cycle going. And then just in terms of us now going into the field, um, if, if you looked at my Twitter account, you'll see, for example, Lungile loved taking music videos of us, uh, chatting in the car on our way to the story. That had to immediately stop. Uh, the cameraman uh, up front of the car and the and reporter now in the back, sitting in the back corner. We wear our masks in the car. We have sanitizers with us. We sanitize all the microphones. And, uh, and uh, we we've also had to um, be more mindful of uh, just sticking a microphone in somebody's Space when we're out uh, in the field, uh, we now have to keep our distance. We've had to change uh, the kind of equipment that we use to uh, interview people so that we stay far away. And of course, uh, where it's uh, where we go into areas that are densely populated, we are always wearing our mask uh, if necessary, our um, gloves. And of course, when we get into the car, immediately we sanitize the equipment, sanitize our hands. Um, and uh, so, yes, it has taken some getting used to. Mm. Lindsay, earlier you mentioned that Lungile was considered a very gung-ho, adventurous journalist, also a gentle giant and a brother to all. What are going to be some of the most fondest memories, not only for you, but for his colleagues at the ENCA as a whole? Oh, wow, well, you know, there's so many things uh, to remember uh, about Lingile, um, just because he was not only a, a big man in stature, he was just big-hearted in so many ways. Um, and just, uh, you know, that larger-than-life uh, is cliche. He really embodied that. And I was going back uh, when I was looking for some photographs to send you yesterday, uh, a video that he had taken uh, in the car um, of us and posted to his Instagram account. I didn't really take notice of the caption much at the time, um, but it said life is short. Um, and I don't know, that was some type of prophecy. And, uh, you know, it's life is short. We've got to enjoy the music. We've got to bump heads. We've got to have fun. So I think I will really miss his enthusiasm. Not everybody comes to work every day excited about what we have to do, uh, but Lundine was always generally uh, excited. Often when I had to, when I agreed to meet him at a, at a particular place and we weren't traveling together, I would send him a text and say, this is where we have to be, this is the address, this is what we're going to do. And somehow he would always get to that place before me. And on my way driving there, I would get a text on my phone uh, of a tripod, either standing in front of the steps of Parliament or in front of the bus, um, Nelson Mandela's bus, or uh, at a security desk in a government building. It was his way of telling me, I'm already here, I'm ready to go, where are you? Um, and so when I was going through my pictures, there were all these random photographs of the tripod and the microphone standing in places all over the city where he had arrived before me. And I think I will really just miss the enthusiasm that he brought to every story when we were in the car together on our way there. He wanted to talk through the plan. What are we going to get if you want? Uh, what are we going to do? And sometimes I say, really, I don't know. We'll just have to see when we get there. But he wanted a plan. He wanted to know what we were um, going to do. And um, my memory that I'm personally going to hold on to him for the rest of my career is that um, 
the first time I ever had to do a live casting on TV, I wasn't given much warning. Um, but Shugine was the guy behind the camera. And uh, he was quite upset that I was nervous uh, about what I was going to do. And I said to him, but it's so unnatural. I'm not speaking to another person. And he, he found another colleague and he put her right next to the lens of the camera. He put her face right there and he made her stand there throughout the crossing so that I could feel that I was talking to someone. And I was rocking on my heels uh, out of sheer nervousness. And he walked, uh, came out behind the camera while we were live on air and nodding his head. Uh, and he was always encouraging. Um, and I will miss that personally for him because it wasn't just about his work as a cameraman. He wanted me to be uh, the best I could be. He wanted me to look good. He wanted me to sound good. Um, and he just wanted, he wanted the best just for me, not just for... Um, what he was doing uh, for himself. Um, and I think really what I will miss about him is the care he took for interns. Um, I will admit that often I'm very impatient to have, to have intern an intern take take off, um, But you really brought interns with him wherever we were. Even at Parliament, sometimes I would roll my eyes and think this is so an inappropriate time for us to have an intern. Uh, with us, but uh, Lungili didn't think so. And uh, sometimes I would come out of the building, come and do a live broadcast. He would be waiting for me, and I would I'd see him in a distance, explaining to an intern, showing him from the behind the camera. And once I was positioned to do my live, he would still continue teaching. He found that time um, that many of us who are doing this job every day don't uh, really always have the time or the patience. Um, uh, to share um, our, our knowledge and our skill. And I worry that we're no longer there. Uh, some of the interns are going to really be left a little bit at sea uh, for uh, him not being able to take um, them under his wing. Oh, he sounds like an uh, incredible person, Lindsay. Um, we know, obviously, that uh, doing the work that he did, he came into contact with colleagues, friends and family. Um, have they been asked to self-quarantine? What is the situation regarding that? So right now, Nina, we are all self-quarantined. Uh, since uh, Lungile passed on, on Wednesday morning, we only found out a few hours before he died that he was, in fact, um, uh, that tested positive for COVID-19. Since then, all of us have been asked to stay at home. Uh, some of my colleagues have gone for a test. Those who have worked with uh, Lungile on his last assignments, which were on Wednesday and Thursday last week, so they have gone for tests. I should point out that none of us are ill. None of us are displaying any symptoms uh, of carrying the virus. Um, and so, yes, he's close family members. I know that his wife, uh, is also waiting for her results. As far as I know, no one is ill, um, neither his children. Uh, so it's really just uh, a waiting game now as to what we will do next. I will, uh, for example, be uh, starting to work from home later today, um, but we will all not be in our office. So it, it has been deep clean, sanitized. Uh, that has been happening quite often uh, over the last six weeks, but we had a really in-depth clean in the office and none of us are allowed to go there uh, for the time being. All right. Just in conclusion this morning, Lindsay, we know that with the lockdown, uh, there are strict measures around um, funerals and such. And I know, obviously, it would be incredible if all his colleagues could be there. But in, in, in the... You know, in the event that this is the situation we found ourselves in now with this COVID-19 pandemic, how will the ENCA um, and close co uh, colleagues and, and friends that he made at work commemorate to the memory of Lungile? I think we've been doing that uh, ever since we heard that he passed on on Wednesday morning. We've all been chatting to each other. We're very close to the team in Cape Town, and particularly the camera people, the rest of the camera team, they are also Lungile's friends. And because he was a... Uh, the, an older member of the newsroom, he took great care of all of them. That was the brother in him. And so they weren't just his colleagues, they were also his friends, and they used to hang out and socialize together. And so um, because Lundine was so much about documenting his life, I can assure you he would demand that you send me a clip of this interview immediately um, so that he could post it on his socials. Uh, there are so, we have so many photographs and videos uh, to commemorate his life, and so we've really been sitting at home, messaging each other on our WhatsApp group, uh, going through our photos, uh, reminiscing about him, and so the tribute and uh, 
uh, has already started for him, and we're very well aware, as you point out, that we won't be able to uh, say goodbye to him as we would uh, like. There are restrictions on the number of people who may attend the funeral uh, at this time, only around 50, and so we expect his family members to be present. We understand that his mother, who is in the Eastern Cape, she's his only, um, uh, he's, his, he's her only son, and she won't be able to attend his funeral, sadly. Um, but we are already thinking of many ways uh, to commemorate him, Gile. Once we get back to the office, uh, we are going to decorate his space where he took up literally so much space <laughs> in the newsroom. And uh, as soon as we can all get together, uh, as a group, uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be a gathering with a lot of cake, a lot of red velvet cake, and uh, we are going to make a plan somehow to all get together and uh, commemorating for the larger uh, man that he was, larger than life man that he was, um, and even though we won't be able to physically uh, attend his funeral, uh, which we expect to be in the next uh, few days. Thank you so much, Lindsay. From all of us here uh, at uh, NBC, we extend our condolences to the family of Lungile Tom and, of course, to his friends and colleagues at the ENCA. Thank you so much for taking time out to speak to us this morning. Thank you very much for um, wanting to know more about his life. Um, I, I, he's going to be absolutely thrilled wherever he's watching this. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was uh, Lindsay Dentlinger, who is a journalist at the ENCA, speaking to us on uh, Lungile Tom, who was a cameraman at the ENCA and succumbed to COVID-19 on Wednesday. We send our condolences once again to his family, friends, and to the colleagues at ENCA. Now, Secretary General Antonio Guterres on COVID-19 and the need for mental health, uh, for action on mental health, delivered this message. Let's take a look.